Hey guys, Everything Apple Pro here, and if you've updated iOS 8, you may be regretting it by now. So not only is the performance not the same, it's actually crashing and the battery life isn't great. So the older your device is, the more you're gonna notice that performance-wise, it's just not the same. iOS 7 was better. And in this video, I wanna show you guys how iOS 7 performs on the iPhone 4S compared to iOS 8 and what you can do to make it faster. So on the right here, I have an iPhone 4S on 7.1.2 and one on iOS 8. Now what Apple didn't tell us is that when updating to iOS 8, it's going to take up a lot more room. A lot of people had to remove applications and, you know, delete media in order to make room for iOS 8. And I got to tell you, it's pretty awful on the older devices. I mean, the 5 isn't as affected as the 4S is. It's just so much slower. You know, it is slower, but not only that, things are going to tend to crash more. Battery life isn't just as good. And, you know, doing these tests, I'm going to show you guys just how much worse it is. And then after, I'll show you guys what you can do to fix it. For the first test, let's go ahead and power these devices up and see which one does it first. So one of these iPhones does have a broken power button, so I'm going to turn them on just a little bit differently, but let's go ahead and get them turned on. Now for me, the biggest place where iOS 8 affects the 4S is launching stuff. You're going to have to wait a lot in between opening up an application and having it load and that's just frustrating. I mean, it was perfectly fine in iOS 7 and on iOS 8, it just wasn't good. But anyways, let's go ahead and see which one turns on first. Mm -hmm. Looks like iOS 7 is gonna be the one in the lead. It's already usable, probably a good three seconds before iOS 8. Now that in itself isn't that big of a difference. You know, most people don't care how long it takes to turn their device on, but let's go ahead and launch some applications and see how they compare. So with nothing in the multitasking menu, let's go ahead and launch camera. So just about the same. Not much of a difference there. Let's try App Store. And iOS 7 loads it much faster. I mean, it's just loading and loading here. Finally, there you go. Let's try Settings. Loaded just a, you know, a second faster, but it does make a difference during general usability. I mean, the more stuff you're opening, the more you're gonna notice it. Let's see Messages. So a little bit of a delay there, not as noticeable. Let's try weather. So there is a difference there, very small. Photos, definitely loads faster. Let's go into Geekbench and actually run one of these guys. All right, let's go ahead and run it. Now, so many people tend to think that at the end of a device's life cycle, Apple will purposefully update it to the latest firmware so it runs like crap and it kind of forces people to upgrade. And I don't know how true that is, but I just know Apple has generally never actually forced anyone to upgrade. The fact that it even supplies those old devices like the 4S with the newest firmware is really surprising because if you look over at Android, you know, most of the carriers drop the support for older devices a year from when they're made. And the 4S is actually several years old already. You know, that's really surprising for me that Apple even updates these old devices in the first place. But, you know, whether or not you want to update is up to you. I definitely would not recommend it on the 4S. The 5 is fine, but the 4S, man, you notice it definitely. Now, the good news is if you are running iOS 8 on your device and you want to downgrade to iOS 7, it's still possible. Apple hasn't removed that possibility. So if you do want to downgrade, you literally only have a few days from the making of this video. So click on that annotation up there and it'll take you to my video to where you can downgrade it successfully. So anyways, we have a 216 and a 405 multi-core score. And take note, these are powered by the exact same processors. And on the iOS 7 score, we can see it's a little bit lower. So that doesn't actually translate to usage. It's way slower on the iOS 8 device. I'm surprised to even see that it did better, but just load stuff so much better. And let's go into the browser and I'll show you guys. I mean, this is still loading, guys. That's crazy. Anyways, in the browser, let's just go to reddit.com. So in the browser, let's go ahead and navigate to reddit.com. Boom, iOS 7 loaded. As you can see, there's about a second to two seconds delay on the iOS 8 device. Now the good news is there are several settings that you can tweak to make your iOS 8 experience that much better. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you in settings, you wanna to go to general and spotlight search. Most people don't even use this. So in here, just uncheck everything that you don't need. This will actually help the most, but after that, go into accessibility. In here, you wanna to go to increase contrast and make sure reduce transparency is checked to on. 
Also go to reduce motion and enable that. Now what that does is it removes the parallax feature where you can move your device and it'll give you this little 3D effect. So that'll be gone, but you won't even notice. I mean, it's for a better cause. And lastly, you wanna go into background app refresh and disable this. So you're pretty much gonna be refreshing your apps manually, but you know, there won't be processes working in the background. And lastly, you know, not much of a tip, but pretty much go through your device and see what you don't need. If there are applications on it that you don't use anymore, remove them, go through your media, you know, music, stuff that you don't need and just remove it. Because the more stuff you have on your device, the harder it's gonna be on it and you know, things will be loading slower. And remember, constantly be refreshing this getting all the stuff out of here and reboot your device once in a while, you know, just give it a little fresh start. So guys, I would say, you know, it's not ideal on the iPhone 4S, but you can make it a little bit better by using the steps in this video. Hope I helped you guys and hope it gave you an idea of how iOS 8 compares to iOS 7. Have a great day, guys. Peace.